Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. How you been doing? How goes the grinding? I hope you guys have been uh, keeping up with Summer. I still need to do it myself. I was busy playing the Street Fighter 6 demo. And then when I'm not doing playing that, I'm doing nothing or I'm playing Zelda. <laughs> so I really need to get back into it. But it's okay because I've done everything already for it. But that's not the reason I came here, and I didn't come here to talk about how I'm not playing Fugo. I came here to talk about the fact that there's a banner coming up right now uh, that's already out by the time you've heard this, so chances are you're too late, you've either already made a mistake, or you've... and you've summoned. So I'm just here for the people who are really waiting <laughs> to talk about the four units that are appearing in this summon summoning campaign. It's interesting because most of the time I would skip over it, but this banner is actually very interesting, so that's why I wanted to kind of talk about it. So yeah, let's get into it. So we have Abby Summer, we have Tomoya Summer, we have uh, Murasaki uh, Summer, and then we have Fujino, who's not a summer unit at all. Uh, let's start with, uh, let's go with Murasaki. Yeah, we'll, we'll start here. Actually, before anything, I should say, you know, I'll wait till the end. But let's go into it, Murasaki. Here she is, Murasaki Shikabu. She is a writer. Single target. Two quick, two arts, one buster. First skill is Summer Night Black Widow EX. Chance to seal enemy MP for one turn and reduce her defense for three turns. The MP seal chance is 100% at level 10. It is 30% down at level 10. Six turn cooldown. And the second skill is the Bizarre Hobby Summer C++. 500% chance to reduce one enemy's debuff resistance for one turn. Seal their skills for one turn. Reduce their arch resistance for one turn. Debuff resistance is 100%. And the art resistance is down by 30%. And the third skill is a Literary Maiden Summer A. Charges on MP gauge every turn for three turns. Gain crit stars. 20% MP regen. 20 stars. And five, uh, five turn cooldown. Her passive skills are Writing B+. Her third skill is an increased attack against the Alter Ego enemies. And then her Noble Phantasm is B, but then eventually she gets a Strengthening and it goes to B+. So we'll go to the B plus version. Um, deals damage to one enemy, deals 150% extra damage to enemies with the Earth attribute, and 60% chance to reduce their MP gauge by 1, and then reduce their Arch Resistance for 3 turns. At MP level 1, it's 1,000 to 12,000%. And then all the way at level 5, it's 18,000. And her Arch Resistance is 20% at level Overcharge 1, and then at Overcharge 500%, it is 40% Arch Resistance. So, yeah. She is a little... Well, I mean, what's... Okay, so first of all, I really like this unit a whole bunch. I like Murasaki Shigabu in general. So this is definitely one of the units. I also like love Rider Servants, so this is a, definitely one of the units that I wanted desperately for this year. And after using her a whole bunch, and this is specifically going to the NA side, I can say for 100% certainty, she's okay. <laughs> she's not really anything special, and I feel like half of that has to come with the fact that I also have Quetz, who is just an insane powerhouse. So she's not really bringing a whole lot of damage in this current form that we have over here, which is right here. Like, this isn't enough to cut it, and a lot of her, like, minusing and doing all this doesn't really do much. She has a lot of like crit star generation, which is nice, but she doesn't actually have a way to benefit from that very much. Which is weird, because I feel like some of the best single target writers typically have a way. Well, except for Azamendia, so he might be the only one that doesn't. But he has a whole bunch of other support stuff, but they have a way to increase crit damage, and that helps a whole bunch. So yeah, she ends up just not doing very much damage or as much as you want. The strengthening helps a whole bunch. Uh, cause at least now it gives her a niche that she can fight against. Cause at this moment, it's just generic. She doesn't really excel against fighting anyone cause none of her skills are like, anti-something. It's just kinda like, generic, like, oh yeah, 500% chance to reduce enemy debuff resistance. That's basically it as far as interesting stuff goes. Uh, but it's not enough to carry an entire thing and justify using her. Which is again a shame because I think she's really um, nice to look at, so I would love to be, have more reasons to use her. But she has a strength thing which at least gives her a niche, which is anyone who is of the Earth attribute, which is nice. There's, a, I think there's enough Earth attribute units for it to... Yeah, there's plenty. Yeah, there's plenty in here to justify saying like, oh, you could fight them with her if you wanted and stuff like that. But yeah, that's kind of what my thoughts on her as a, as a free-to-play for. I think she's about what I would call the summer average. 
Uh, here's the thing about summer units. A lot of summer units come in two flavors. Crazy powerful and okay. And that's basically <laughs> the only two things that you'll ever get. Um, there's no real middle road. And she's just kind of that to me. She's just okay. I can't really think of anything that she really excels at. Except for having an amazing outfit. Which, to be fair, it is really nice. All of them. Fantastic. So, that's Shikabu. Next, Tomoe. Tomoe Gozen. Here's Tomoe. She's a saber. Uh, and she has uh, cool VR helmets and a bunch of Oni stuff as well. I mean, it is summary, so how good the unit looks in a swimsuit, I think, is as important as how good they are <laughs> as an actual unit. Um, Tomoe. She's a saber. She has one quick, two arts, two buster. Her active skills are Midnight of Summerside. Grants self the gut status. One time, three turns. Increase on crit damage for three turns. 500% chance to grant self Nighthawk. Delay debuff for three turns. Treat it as a buff. Demerit. Nighthawk, 500% chance to stun self for one turn after three turns. Revive with 3000 HP and crit damage up is 100%. So they wanted to make sure that she had a huge negative for getting 100% of crit damage, basically. Second skill, VR Shinkage Ryu, B+. Increase on art performance for one turn. Increase on crit star absorption on arts cards for one turn. 30% arts up and uh, arts absorption is 500% up. Third skill, survival countryside B+. Gain crit stars, um, gain critical stars every turn for three turns. Grant self debuff immunity for one time, five turns. Stars is plus 25 and star regen is 10 and the cooldown is 6. Cool. Passive skills, magic resistance A, writing B+. Plus. Pen skill is a increase out attack against the alter A ego enemies. And our noble phantasm is the VR Shinkage Ryu Oegi Tomoe Gafuchi Taiyo Ken or just VR Shinkage Ryu Hidden Art. Tomoe's Abyss, 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 Abyssal Solar Blade. And it is an arts. It is AoE. It increases its own arts performance for a 20% for one turn. Activates first. Increase buster performance for 20% for one turn. Deals damage to all enemies. Inflicts burn with uh, 1000 damage for 5 turns to them. And inflicts spread of fire status for 5 turns to them. Increases burn damage to them. The damage 450% at level 1. And all the way at level 5, it's 750%. And the charge level is. Uh, one is burn damage up is 100%, and all the way at level 5, it's 300%. So, and three hits to it, because I think that's pretty important for um, arts dudes. So, Tomoe, she's very good. I know I literally just said that there's only really two <laughs> kinds of units of summer, but they're okay, and there's um, crazy busted. She's not actually in the crazy dust busted department. I think she's a... I think... I think at least in NA, I think she might actually be the best AoE Saber, I think, who is specifically arts, but let me double check that. And can loop. That's a very important thing to add, and can loop, because Nero is an AoE arts, but she only hits like one time, so she can't loop. Uh, Bride Nero is not an AoE unit. Lancelot is single target, so again, it's a different thing. Mm, I don't think she is. She, is Lakshimba an AoE? I actually don't remember too much about it. She's quick, first of all. It's probably between her and Jason. Uh, I don't remember any specific. Unfortunately, if it's a, if I'm, oh no, I'm stupid. Muramasa is the best. Okay. That's my uh, anti-Shiro popping up. Muramasa is clearly the best <laughs> AoE saber. And then it's probably um, Tomoe or Jason. Um, most people will probably put Tomoe just because there's less uh, um, resources to invest. But I think Jason is a solid uh, third choice that could easily be... I could hear an argument for second, to be honest. But okay, yes. So she ends up being, the the one problem is that if you're someone who has um, Muramasa, there's no reason for you to use any of the other AoE Saber units who are, are who are also arts. 
The good thing, though, is that she is Tamoy, and if you're a big fan of Tamoy, oh my god, they made a unit that is just insanely good and is also just, hey, use them. If you're a fan of this character, this is basically the dream that you want. You want a character that's usable and is good enough that she stands the test of time and continues to be used, and from someone who is, again, I have Tamoy, I can say for sure, it's either between her or Jason that I kind of use, and both of them I kind of easily am able to loop with Castoria. It really kind of depends. If I need a little bit more of hard, heavy hitting, just because I haven't invested any grails into Jason, I usually go with Tamoy. And she does a pretty good job of being able to take down any um, mob that is just pure Lancer or maybe sometimes Berserker as well. So I think she's really solid in that regards. So if you're someone who's a big fan of Tamoy, this is basically the best hope that you would have for a unit because it is the unit that you want and she's going to be an AoE unit which means you can use her for farming um, and that is the vast majority of the time what you're going to be doing in a go. <laughs> so that's why typically I put AoE units. That's a personal thing though. If you're someone who's also a big fan of single target sign, it's fine. Well that's fine because the other Tamoys I think also single target. So you have your Single target to Moy for when you want her to single target attack things, and then you have the AoE one for when you want to use her for against mobs. That's perfect. It's perfect synergy right there. It's more that you could ask for. I think she's really good. She might actually be the best one of the summer units here, actually, if I'm... Yeah, I think of the three summer units that are on here, I think she's actually the prize to get for and to get. She's the best of the three, which is then followed up by probably... I think, is it actually Murasaki? And then Abby is the worst? Yeah, that sounds about right. Let's talk about Abby now. <laughs> Let's talk about Abby. Uh, can we put you in an appropriate clothes? Let's give you the Pope hat, sure. We have Abby Summer. She's a foreigner. Two quick, one arts, two buster. Active skills are sleep inducing roses B, inflict a sleep status for two turns to one enemy. Similar to stun, unlike stun, this status will be removed when the target gets attacked and removes their buffs. Reduces their defense for one attack two turns while a sleep status is active. And the defense down is 50%. Second skill, Mass Hysteria B+, inflict terror status for one time three turns on all enemies. Chance to activate the debuff below every turn when activated. 500% chance of stun them for one turn, reduce their defense for three turns. Active chance is 55% and defense is 20%. That's Mass Hysteria B. The one who guides a charges his own NP gauge, increases his own debuff success rate by 30% for 3 turns, it reduces one enemy's buster resistance for 3 turns, 50% up in NP, 30% buster resistance, and the cooldown is 6. That's going to be important for a point I'm going to be coming up pretty soon. Passive skills existence outside the domain EX. Insanity B+, and Divinity B+, her pen skill is a bonus against um, Avengers. And her noble phantasm is Dreamlands, the far away land of dreams. It's an A rank buster AoE, which removes all enemy debuff, uh, defensive buffs, activates first, and then deals damage to them. And the MP damage is 300% at level 1, 500% at level 5, and the overcharge is reduces their defense for 3 turns, and at level 1 it's 20%, and at level um, final overcharge level it is 40%. Okay, so maybe I was a little bit harsh. I think she's probably better than Shikabu. And the reason is is that she can actually be used with her upcoming buster supports pretty nicely. Because this is able to kind of... It is nice to have one enemy reduce <laughs> their buster resistance by 60%. That's not bad if you're using this ability twice. The reason I'm saying that is because Vich has an ability that basically lets them uh, have their skill up by two so you should be able to use this specific noble uh, skill twice um which is nice which is good uh but her main issue has always been that she doesn't deal very much damage she's a buster unit that doesn't deal very much damage and she's foreigner so she's nice against specifically berserker nodes and to be fair to her because i have her and i have her at np2 uh, outside the weak damage, she is very nice when you're just fighting a bunch of buster dudes, but you can say that about literally any foreigner. Um, and typically when you're buster, and maybe it's an issue of class, because buster unfortunately is all about like pure beatdown. And it's kind of hard to be like, well, she can do all this and do all that, and that's nice, but if she's not actually bringing... Buster is really known for doing one thing. 
<laughs> it's doing damage, and it's not really known for doing anything else. Uh, Arts is obviously more focused on NP gain and being able to do damage while having Castoria and all that. And Quick is able to get a bunch of Quick Stars and do quick crazy things and do things like that but buster really is all all they have is damage man and if you're not bringing the damage then it's just not good enough um but again like i said i have her np2 i'm not mad that i have her i've used her occasionally on times because again there are times where i'm just doing nothing but fighting berserkers and having it a, a unit that can stop berserkers <laughs> is really nice and I would say that about absolutely any uh, foreigner, to be honest, but it's nice to kind of have one that is just so anti-focus on Berserkers and they can take them down. She also has little, like, cute things. Obviously, the first Ascension stage is not really cute, but once she's actually in her uh, calm state, she has the Kuroneko Pancakes, which is cute. Um, that's all perfectly fine. I think that they could continue buffing her. I don't know how to buff her continuously, to be 100% real with you. I just know that she needs more damage. Uh, the sleep mechanic is probably not the greatest. I think it has to do something with just like sleep. I think she just needs something a little bit better than just being able to sleep and do stuff like that. And yeah, because I think this is fine. Like the, removing all debuffs is a pretty nice effect, especially it's probably more dangerous when you're fighting them as a boss, and it's more annoying because this removes the anti purge defense, which is the thing Castoria has, and this is the only thing that removes it. So if you're going against a boss who spams this, and congratulations, she's perfect for that. But I would say the same thing about Amakasu, because <laughs> Amakasu does the same thing, and he's a ruler, so he doesn't take much damage from things, <laughs> except for Berserkers, funny enough. So if you ever fight a Berserker that just has a whole bunch of these things, Abby would be very nice <laughs> to fight against. A uh, Berserker that constantly is giving themselves defensive buffs to prevent them from being killed, in which case you could just remove them all and kind of go to town with that without ever taking very, many da very much damage. And that's kind of her go-to thing. And I don't know, I think every single time, I never want to be, I never want to harp on Abby too much. Lerp, a big Abby fan, he's someone who was saying, has always said from the beginning that people were a little bit too harsh on Abby. And she's not as bad as you think she is. Because on paper, she seems very bad. And sometimes when you're using her, she feels very bad. But I don't know, there's something about it where it's like, it's not that bad. I've had actually worse five-star units and worse units and that kind of stuff, but for a unit that's probably as popular as Abby is, and um, she is very popular on the Japan side, I actually don't know on our side, to be 100% real with you, but I know on the Japan side, Abby's pretty popular. Um, it's not up to snuff to what they consider good for what they like. Like, Kiara, she's good for what they would consider, hey, this is a character people like make them strong summer comma that's another one summer artoria like you see where i'm going here is that typically in the five star summer units even though a lot of the four stars are usually okay or good in the tomoe case um usually the five stars are pretty solid at what they do like even tomomo the first one from the very first summer she still has that anti-male thing and she can easily be used for that and she has aged pretty nicely i would say um, Summer Alter Artoria is not as talked about, but I think she has interesting skills that lets her be different from a lot of the other single target riders, and she's quick and stuff like that. Uh, Summer Nero has that ability to just be immune to all kinds of <laughs> stupid things. Um, she doesn't, uh, she does, she deals, uh, neutral, um, damage, I believe, to all classes is, I think, what she does. And she takes neutral damage from everything, which is a stupid ability to give to a unit. I don't think they've ever given that ability to anyone else. I actually can't believe that she actually has that ability, now that I think about it. <laughs> Those of, you kind of forget that she has it, but it's secretly, I think, an uh, insanely stupid skill that she has. Let me see. This is also the one summer unit that has always evaded me. Incre uh, ignores own defense class disadvantage against all classes for three turns. It takes one percent, one times damage from them. It doesn't say like the the like the base one. It's literally all classes <laughs> for three turns, and I think she's the only 
the only unit that has this ability, which is silly that they've never given it to anyone else, but I think they're probably afraid to give it to anyone else. But anyway, long story short, what I'm trying to say here is I think Abby just wasn't up to snuff to what a lot of people would have wanted. And considering what kind of power she actually has and the Eldritch being, she could definitely have been stronger. So I think I understand on that part. I don't think she's as bad as a lot of people kind of think she is. But I also think she could be much better than what she is right now. But there you go. And finally, Fujino. Let's talk about her. Uh, the video is also getting real long, so I'll try and get by this real quick. Fujino. She is an archer. She has a quick two arts, two buster. First skill, Mystic Eyes of Distortion EX. Increases own buster performance for three turns. Ignores defense for three turns. Increases own MP generation rate for three turns. Buster up is 35% and MP rate is 30%. Okay. Second skill, Clairvoyance of Darkness C. Ignores evasion for three turns. Gain crit stars. 15 crit stars, baby. Third skill, Residual Pain A. Reduces his own max HP by 2... Thousand for three turns, demerit, reduces on damage taken for three turns, grants self gut stats for one time three turns, revives with one HP. Damage taken down is two thousand less damage taken. Her passive skills are magic resistance D, independent action A plus, and territory creation B. Her third append skills and increased damage against assassins, and her noble phantasm, which is rank EX and will eventually go into uh, a stronger rank EX, is the Vision Opti Matara Mystic Eyes of Distortion. And it's a buster, single target, three hits, deals damage to one enemies, inflict buff block status to them for one time three turns, deals extra damage to super large enemies and then reduce their attack for three turns. MP level one, it's 800% damage, and at MP level five, it's uh, 12,000. And the bonus against super large enemies is 150% at overcharge one, and if you get it to the final overcharge, it's 200%. And the attack down is 10% at overcharge 1 and 30% at the final level. So, to explain Fujino, she's super good, super solid, super like if you're having a unit that has, uh, if you need a single target uh, archer unit that you just know won't die, Fujino is the best one at it. Uh, she's also extremely rare because she's a collab unit so on the jp side she's actually rarer on the jp side than she is on the na side because she actually came back for us like a little while ago and uh it was amazing it was like wait what they're bringing back fujino that's crazy because they they've been super they have not brought her back very i think th they've only brought her back on the jp version twice and as it looks for NA, if you're a fan of Fujino and you're specific of the, of the series she comes from, this is your best chance of getting Fujino. This is your... <laughs> I don't know when she's coming back. She could come back in like a surprise banner and you can be like, oh, yeah, there you go. Now's your chance to get Fujino. But I don't know that for sure. All I know is, all I really know for banners coming forward are the ones that are on JP, and the ones we get a little bit ahead of the side from the um, Taiwanese version of the game, I believe it is. Um, the one that's just like a couple weeks ahead of us. I forget which version it is specifically. I'm pretty sure it's the Taiwanese version, but anyway. Those are really the only things I know for certain that are coming forward to the game. Anything else is left to completely up to the winds of change and they've shown in the past that Fujino they're willing to bring back at least for us and not on JP side for some reason but we can't you can't predict that you can't know you can't know if you're going to be ready you don't know if you're going to be saving for another unit you just don't know so your best chances of getting Fujino are when you know for 100% certainty Fujino is going to be right here right now this is my only shot this is my best chance now the problem with that is that everyone's saving for Lost Belt for the new summer it's extremely dirty that they put her here in what is arguably a very weak banner and i think this is why they put it on here because again i think the go for for most units for most people is is tamoy and i and if you played summer you probably already got her in the first part that's the only reason in my mind they added fujino to this banner also this banner isn't like the one that was in jp where you would rotate and you would have a day that just has her. You're not, we don't have that. I'm pretty sure we don't have that. At least from what I, I, I can actually check that. One moment. But I'm pretty sure we don't have that. Give me a sec. Alright, I'm back. Now there's, yeah, there's no rotation. It's literally just everyone's here. 
good luck if you're getting it. Um, and the reason that is is because of the guaranteed summon they don't really... It's <clears throat> it's funny that because of the rotation system, it makes it much harder to get four-star units. And for the most part, I'm kind of okay with that. But in this instance, where the four-star is clearly the one most people would want to be going for, it's extremely annoying that she shares this banner with three, uh, two other four-stars. One that's good and one that's okay. And then Abby, who most people don't want. It's very unfortunate. There's no way to look at this banner and go, well, at least I'll get this unit. Because anytime you get the featured unit, you have to pray that you don't see the Foreigner card, you don't see the Saber card, you don't see the Rider card. It's Archer or Bust, and that's just kind of unfortunate. It's a big pain, and it's something that they really need to address, because I think it sucks. The current way to get four stars is so broken, because it's the they need to fix their pity so that we can have rotation banners back. It's stupid that it, it breaks like that. It, it's very dumb. Uh, it seems like an easy fix to me, but what the hell do I know? Uh, Fugo was made with spaghetti code. <sighs> but anyway, Fujino. This is going to be your best chance. And forgive me if I'm not saying that right. I didn't watch the show. I didn't watch Shiki's show, so I don't know. Um, that's not true. I actually watched one movie or so, and I never got more into it. It was many years ago. I probably have to start all over again. But anyway, that's the banner for this one. In terms of should you summon, uh, my gut feeling tells me no. Like... I don't know. I feel like this is too hard a price to pay. Like, there's a level of... I understand being loyal to the character that you like and going for it, but my heart actually goes out to Fujino fans for this one. This banner is not good for you to be summoning for her. And you really don't know when she's coming back, so for a lot of people, they probably feel like they don't really have a choice. And for those people, I say, hey, do your best. I wish you the best of luck, and I give you my luck for this one. But for everyone else, this is a very easy skip banner. Like, if you were able to avoid not summoning on this you're able to not avoid summoning you're able to stop yourself from summoning on this it's like not that hard a decision if you were going to summon on any of these banners between the three it would be this one <laughs> so this one again for is the only reason you would summon and they've made the banner worse because on the jp version they had a rotation so i think it would probably be better to hope to lie, lay in the fortunes of NA and hope that they'll eventually bring back Fujino in a way that will let her be the only featured SR in the, in the banner. It seems like a long shot, but hey, <sighs> it could happen. Crazier things have happened, but that's the end of the video, everyone. Best of luck on your summons if you do end up summoning. I'm going to go away. I'm probably going to go do something else, not play a video game. I have to sort out my magic cards. I have to figure out something, and I'll be back. For whatever video I decide to end up recording next. <laughs> Lost Belt 6 is almost on the way, so you can start getting ready for that as well. Uh, as soon as I get the, the all systems go from the official site, I'll be able to talk about that as well. So until next time, everyone, you guys have a good day, have a good night, and goodbye. Peace.